In this guide, you'll learn how to use the Blur platform, one of the largest platforms for trading NFT tokens. Everything you need to know to stay safe. Blur poses significant competition to other well-known platforms. It emerged quite recently and quickly gained popularity, mainly due to an airdrop for users who engaged with its features. This allowed users to accumulate a substantial number of tokens by trading on the platform. Another notable aspect is the absence of trading fees, as the platform currently does not charge fees for the operations conducted. But more on that later. Let's start from the beginning, ensuring that we are on the official website and that the address entered in our browser is correct. Once everything checks out on the main page, you'll find a showcase of the most popular collections ranked by popularity or trade volume over specific intervals you've chosen. Below, you'll find additional information about the platform and key trading details. Now, let's get down to the specifics purchasing NFTs. I'll scroll up and click on the Collections tab. I've set aside around $20 in my Ethereum wallet, so I'll sort all available collections by floor price to find something really affordable. Let's assume I've decided to buy an NFT from a specific collection. I want to mention right away that I haven't checked this collection before. I don't know if it's worth investing in. Certainly, you shouldn't proceed as I am doing now. My goal is simply to show you the entire process of buying and selling. I assume that the money spent during this transaction will serve educational purposes rather than investment. As for you, prepare for the purchase by analyzing the market and potential for the future to make informed decisions. I click on the chosen collection, select the token I want to buy, let's say this specific one due to its superior rarity ranking. To complete the transaction, I'll connect my MetaMask wallet with the platform. But besides it, you can choose any other wallet from the list. After clicking on Connect, we'll be prompted to select the appropriate profile. If you're using dedicated profiles based on the rules mentioned in the material about configuring MetaMask, choose the profile designated for NFTs. On the screen, permission requests will appear. Those visible on the screen, such as accessing the account state, address, activity, and suggesting transactions to sign, are entirely standard. I mention this to emphasize the importance of always paying attention to what appears here because, in haste, we might click too quickly. In the case of some unscrupulous services, this could result in clearing our account. In this instance, everything is fine, so I click Connect. In the next stage, we are asked to accept the platform's terms of service, also by signing it using our web wallet. Having previously reviewed the terms, I click Sign. Now, we can enjoy all the features available on the platform. I hover over the Buy Now button and click on it. Shortly after, in the top right corner, a notification appears, stating that the item is no longer available likely because someone already bought it or the offer expired. Just to be sure, I'll try again, but it seems I'm getting the same notification. So I'll go back to the previous list and choose another token. Let's assume it's this one. I open its profile and click Buy Now. In MetaMask, a purchase transaction appears for signing. As you can see, the NFT price is 22 cents, but the transaction fee is 12. This is because using the Ethereum network can be relatively expensive and currently the gas fee is not at its lowest, meaning substantial fees are required for any transaction. In the meantime, I'll switch the transaction fee from regular to low. This is a feature that allows you to save on transaction fees. However, you must remember that using a reduced fee sometimes increases the risk of a transaction failure. If you're using the regular Ethereum network, in the case of a failed transaction, you still incur a fee, even if the purchase didn't go through. I configured my settings so that in the event of a failed transaction, no fee is charged from me, allowing me to comfortably switch from normal to low fees without any risk.
The knowledge of how to implement such settings is something I share with my students in the training on the Udemy platform whose link you can find below this material. I confirm the settings and wait for the transaction to be recorded on the blockchain, which takes a moment. You can see that the transaction status has changed to confirmed and around $11 has been deducted from the account, meaning we paid 22 cents for the NFT and the rest is the transaction fee charged by the network for processing the operation. I'll refresh the page now and you can also see that our purchase transaction is recorded on the token activity list. I'll go to the My Portfolio tab in the top right corner and see that I indeed own the token I purchased, listed among the assets associated with this address. Additionally, in this section, you can check your history, offers, and utilize the lending feature, which I'll discuss in detail in a separate section. Now, let's focus on the second fundamental option, preparing the token for sale and listing it. I select my NFT and press the sell button at the bottom of the screen, triggering the sales panel. Here, we configure all the options related to our listing. You can try setting the price based on the current floor price, top trait, or through a ladder. In the case of this NFT, the cool features of this function might not be fully apparent as this collection is rather basic and there isn't a specific valuation. When you try these functions with a regular collection, you'll definitely notice the differences. Below, you'll find information about fees. It indicates that Blur doesn't charge a trading fee. 7% commission is default, but you can edit it. I'll enter 0.5% or you can even enter zero. Regardless of what we input here, if our token is sold through OpenSea, an additional 2.5% or 3% transaction fee will be applied, as in this case. The final amount depends on the collection we're using. I'll set the selling price to 1 Ethereum so we can see a clear and concise summary of the fees and costs associated with the sale. If a transaction occurs through Blur after deducting fees, 0.99 Ethereum will be credited to our account. However, if the sale takes place on OpenSea, we'll receive 0.97 Ethereum, resulting in approximately a $50 difference in the final price. If these amounts suit us, at the bottom, we choose the duration of our listing. After the selected period, our offer will automatically expire. I'll choose six months and click list one item, prompting a MetaMask window with a transaction requiring confirmation to appear. At this point, we are asked to grant general access to the collection, meaning that after confirming this transaction, we can list any NFTs from this collection without covering fees for each listing. I switched the fee from normal to low to save a bit of Ethereum. And now, after a brief wait, I see that my transaction has been successfully executed. And after processing the transaction, the second query mentioned earlier appears, confirming this specific listing within the platform, requiring no additional transaction fees. I confirm and our NFT is now up for sale, visible on the list of available offers. All that remains is to wait for a buyer. Additionally, we can accept offers from buyers at any time if one is submitted. Here, you'll find a list of offers from other users in order from best to worst. If such offers are listed with our token for sale, we can accept them by confirming the transaction. Remember that in such cases, a sales commission and an additional transaction confirmation fee will be charged. On Ethereum, it could be a few dollars or more. Therefore, before accepting, I suggest calculating whether it's truly a good idea. For more on cryptocurrencies and NFTs, check out the upcoming segments. If you're looking for a comprehensive training with all the information in one place, I encourage you to explore the Udemy course I've specifically created for individuals seeking high quality content. The link is below this video. If you like my material, please leave a thumbs up. If you have any questions, ask them in the comments. Good luck.